Lost Memories of Self, a Forgotten Murder Case, a dead guy and a detective joined forces to find out the truth behind them both. The detective assigned a dead guy a task, to sneak into the prison and find out a certain prisoner's schedule for tomorrow. What should I care? I don't have a schedule for tomorrow. That's how I'm feeling about it at the moment. Hello guys and welcome to TG and the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we saved Lynn once again. She's died for like the third time now. And in this episode, we were asked by Lynn to figure out the schedule of a certain prisoner. I believe it was Prisoner D99. And we're going to see if we can do that because apparently, like we learned originally in one of the first couple of episodes apparently figuring out what's going on with lynn will help us figure out what's going on with us so we're just gonna go along with it for a bit i wonder how that detective who keeps dying is doing hope she's still alive bet she's pretty pleased with herself keeping so much of the reaper's attention focused on her that little lady is waiting for her at the chicken kitchen after i take care of this assignment i better head there too Indeed we shall. First of all, let's slide this on over here. Because this will allow us to get back up here and we can talk to the old man and the uh, guard up here. It's all over. It's all over for me. Lynn, sweet cute Lynn, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away on me. And then those detectives, matching bookends blue and green, yelled at me. Forget about all that. Now you listen to me, kid. Yes, sir. You're bright as the sun, Lynn. Probably doesn't even know you exist. And those detectives will probably yell at you your whole life. Never mind fretting about every little setback. Enjoy your life. Get what you can out of it. Mister, would you mind just leaving me alone? Uh, it seems there's no way to talk him out of his slump right now, so let's go ahead and just head on down to the uniformed men's office. Because, of course, this is where the prisoners are going to be. We heard about one of the prisoners uh, a couple of episodes ago, so we should be able to find a good lead on our uh, certain prisoner right here. Uh, so, how are the preparations coming along? I think they're taking care of them right now. Yeah? Man, I'm not looking forward to this. That kind of surprised me coming from you. I didn't know you thought about such things. By the way, that was just me being sarcastic, just in case you didn't catch that. Two more hours, and then it's time. I guess we should just get back to work. Yeah, I guess you're right. The atmosphere sure seems tense. I guess I'll just get back to my work as well. I want you to go find out about a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. Yes, the prisoners are given different job details every day. Each prisoner's schedule for the next day is written on a small blackboard in his cell. His prisoner number is D99. Alrighty then. How do I get to these cells? I'd better try to get some information here first. So you'll remember Officer Bailey and the other emo detective over there, I forget his name. Uh, we have these bunch of memos over here, and these will actually help us learn about uh, various different prisoners here at the uh, police station. Hey, Bailey. Try pinning up your memos a little better next time. Let me see this thing. Inspection Prisoner C-74. Oh, it's almost time for that. I'd better prepare. Prisoner C-74, eh? What did that big whale do, anyway? You don't know about the Metro Police Department siege case? Metro who what? C-74 barricaded himself into the Metro Police Department and took siege of the police. Even pointed a huge flamethrower at the chief commissioner. Where the heck did he do all that? That's what the detectives who surrounded him asked, too. What are your demands, they asked. And? The guy looked confused, thought about it for a while, and said... Bring me five s servings of curry and rice on the devil. Curry and rice? That's it? 
Unfortunately, no. After he was done eating, he torched the commissioner's office with the flamethrower. Torched it good. Important documents and the commissioner's mustache were destroyed by the flames. What the heck did he do all that for? Because the curry was too spicy, he said. Huh? It was too spicy and I just lost it, he said. Seriously? The curse and shock waves throughout the country. But it doesn't make any sense. In the first place, how did a huge armed guy make it all the way to the commissioner's office alone? It's a complete mystery. What? Don't they just a why don't they just ask C-74 himself? Maybe they did, but they haven't released anything about it. Apparently it's all a matter of national security. Or secrecy. Hmm. Ah! Would you quit throwing my important duty memos away? We also got this other memo right over here. Hey, Bailey. What's the matter? You can't even pin up, pin up a memo properly? Let me see this thing. Take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a request to use the phone a little while ago. You already told me that earlier. C-38, huh? What did that punk do anyway? You never heard the story about the secret rendezvous case? Secret who what? C-38 was a singer in a band. His group was playing a concert that was being broadcast all over the country live. And right in the middle of their encore, there was a huge incident. A huge incident? What was it, a murder or something? In a way, it was even worse than a murder, because it had to do with national secrets. Huh? National secrets? A rock band? I, I'm lost. The song they were, called was, they were doing called, was called Secret Rendezvous, but the lyrics C-38 was singing were completely different from usual. So how is that a huge incident? Because the new lyrics exposed all of the nation's dark, seamy secrets. Budget misappropriations, fork, economic strategies, illicit dealings, everything. He was caught red-handed in the act of leaking national secrets. Seriously? The case sent shockwaves throughout the country. But it doesn't make any sense. In the first place, how would a rock singer know any top secret information? It's a complete mystery. What? Why don't they just ask C-38 himself? Maybe they did, but they haven't released anything about it. Apparently, it's all a matter of national secrecy. Hmph. Ah! What's your throwing with my important duty memos away? And one final memo to... Let me just go ahead and wait for him to... There we go. One final memo just to... Finish it off here. I think this will be our uh, prisoner that we needed to talk about. Hey, Bailey. Let me see this thing. Bring dinner to, dinner to prisoner D99. The chief is preparing it for him right now. Ooh, how fancy. D99, eh? Even I know about this one. Yeah. Such a sad case. Hard for us, too. He shot his wife, didn't he? Right in front of a family member? It's just awful. Why in the world did he do it? Why would he do something like that? Of all people. The motive, everything, all a complete mystery. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense that he would do some anything like that. I don't know the details, but apparently, this case is a matter of national secrecy as well. I don't get it. None of it makes any sense. You do know what kind of prison this is, don't you? It's a special prison built just for these kinds of special cases. At D99, who knows what he's thinking, or hiding behind that beard of his. I don't like any of it. I knew I couldn't take my job seriously without it getting to me. So, the prisoner I'm looking for, D99, was convicted of murder, eh? And he apparently has a beard. Ah! What you quit throwing my important duty memos away? It's time.
There, it's done. Alrighty, now I wonder if I can... The screen shows rows of tiny rooms. The rooms are really, really small, and you can see right into them from the outside. I suppose the bars keep the rooms airy, but I wouldn't want to live in one myself. I wonder where these little rooms are. I believe I can go ahead and just... Ah, uh, no, I can't uh, go into ghost form while I'm floating over there. Hey, Bailey, I wonder what this says now. Can I just hold down B? Would you quit sending these memos over here? No! Huh? Not until I figure out how you always know the exact instant a memo starts falling. Not until I solve that mystery. Ah! Next time, I will find the answer next time. I guess it's time to try and find a new path. Not really anything we can do right now, it seems. missing something. What is... Oh wait, can I just... Oh, I'm an idiot! I can just do this right now! Ah, yeah! And get through that conversation, and now we should be over here on the switch. Yep! There you go, there you go again, fooling around with that thing. It wasn't me. Don't lie, you know you love to see me jump and prepare for emergency. Oh yeah, sure, way back when I first got this job. But I've had enough of that now. Besides, you always react to exactly the same way. Ah! The emergency switch is probably just loose. Probably because I fooled around with it too much. Well, it's for emergencies, don't play with it. Anyway, it wasn't me. Maybe you ought to get it repaired, huh? Well, I'll close it back up. It's making me feel on edge. Nah, too much of a pain. A pain? Proper emergency procedures are a pain to you? What a sad, sad state of affairs. Okay, I've started to figure out how to do a sort of uptight voice without, uh... Without straining my throat so much. I'm guessing that's the kid they were talking about. The one who sang the National Secrets. If he's a prisoner, he must have come from the cells. Can I use this to... Er... Okay, so now I gotta time it to where I press it and then... There we go. Now we can use this to get on over to the... Uh, guitar. So this is that thing that was making that horrible noise a second ago. I guess it's a way for this spiky-haired youth to express himself. Sentiments like, I'm hungry, or I'm thirsty, maybe. Something primitive like that, I bet. Peace out! I'm done. Or, what voice should I do for you? You don't get many speaking lines, so... I'll write C- I'll write C-38. Back to your cell. Hey, guard man, how about give me a little space? That crazy walk of yours is dangerous, man. <laughs> a proper walk for a properly led life. Now let's go. Yo, no lectures, man. I walk my own path, my own way to my own music. I forget if I already did a surfer dude voice for a character in this game. So, I finally made it to the cells. Now to find prisoner D99 and check out his work schedule for tomorrow. What could Lin possibly want with that information?
Damn. Don't think I could take another second in this stinking pit. Looks like a guard man. Looks like guard man is gone. All this waiting is wiping me out. Hope this will. This one will finally do it. Go go go. Come on, sausage head. So that's interesting. We'll see what that's all about in a little bit. Let me just go ahead and, uh... Hmm. This prisoner obviously isn't the one I'm looking for. Prisoner D99 has a beard. There's one of those little blackboards Lin said would be in the cells. Maybe I should check out Spikey's schedule for tomorrow. Let's check that indeed. So, this is one of those little blackboards Lin mentioned. Let me just give it a little read. Tonight. I lost a lot of things, my life, my memory, but there's a certain skill I've apparently lost too. I can't read! I can see that there's some kind of writing on this blackboard, but I have absolutely no idea what it means. If I can't read Prisoner d 99s sk work schedule for tomorrow, what do I do now? What am I supposed to report back to Lynn now? If I tell her I couldn't read it, she'll kill me. But actually, I guess I don't have to worry about that one too much. Anyway. I might as well try to find Prisoner d 99 cell. Hopefully I'll at least be able to find out something while I'm there. Can't go back to land empty-handed, but of course a ghost doesn't actually have hands. Indeed they don't. This telephone. It looks like it's an internal line only. It doesn't call outside the prison. So the only places I can go with this telephone are other phones within the building that I've already possessed. So that's an interesting little mechanic that they introduce here. The phone can, obviously, we can only travel to places that the phone can access. And if it's an internal phone, not much we can really do about that, except go to other places, which actually will be kind of helpful because, you know, before we would need a guard to get through that door there, but now we can just go through the phone line. So even though it's a bit restricted, it's still quite helpful when we get to moving around. Hmm, an emergency button. An emergency in a prison. That's got to be a pretty bad situation. I'll just give it a little try. I caused quite an uproar, I guess. And I bet each prisoner reacts differently to the alarm. It might be fun to watch. Let's see, if I want to change my view, I can slide the screen or I can use D-pad to, to do the same thing. Guess I'll take a little look around. Maybe their behavior will give me a clue about my next step. So let's go ahead and follow this guy as he walks down the stairs here. Or if he even does. Yep, there we go. We also have this guy right here who just threw that spoon over there. He received this thing. That note that we saw the spiky prisoner, you know. And then right over here. All clear. Trick time. So if I sound the alarm, it gets people moving, eh? Maybe I can use their mo movements to get around myself. That way I can get an idea of what's going on in each cell. So you'll notice the O and the X uh, things right over there. Um... In Japan, like an O, or like a circle, I guess that would be, on like a piece of paper or something like that. That's kind of like a, a check mark here in the States, where it's just like, it's like the go-ahead symbol. And of course, X is an X, so that's kind of a universal symbol. Uh, so he's sending these uh, notes with symbols on them down to this uh, prisoner right over here, which gets caught by that thing, which rings a bell which gives the guy here a go-ahead saying, hey, you can go ahead and continue what we're doing, which you will see in just a minute.
Trick time. So we can see here that uh, he crawls down here and with his spoon that he has there, he begins digging, trying to get a way out. By the looks of him, that must be Cur that must be the curry lover from the police department siege case. But never mind that, where'd he go? What's going on in the cell? Anyways, there's a little blackboard here too. Just to be safe, maybe I'd better check the curry lover's schedule for tomorrow too. Try as we might with this, unfortunately, I still can't read. But I'd better go check out Prisoner D99's cell anyway. Maybe I can find some kind of information that might help Lin out. Besides, I want to see what this prisoner Lin is investigating looks like. I already, I did not mean to press A there. What we want to go ahead and do is we want to ring this bell because this will then, uh, even though there isn't anything right there, it signals to this prisoner here that he thinks there's going to be a note there saying, hey, the, the uh, guards are coming over here. And if we attach to a spoon there, he chucks it over here and we're allowed to get into the next cell over. Same thing here. It looks like this is just an internal phone too. Doesn't call outside. So the only places I can go with this telephone are other phones within the building that I've already possessed. It looks like the curry lover comes back when he hears the bell. Can't make heads or tails of his behavior once he gets back though. But this prisoner isn't the one I'm looking for. I'll just chalk this guy up to it takes it it takes all kinds. I'd better try to find a path to D99 cell. Luckily we've already got that right over here. Hmm. What a strange cell. And the prisoner inside it, he seems to be enjoying himself. This is the last cell in this area. So that means this man humming to himself must be prisoner D99. According to what the guards said, D99, eh? Even I know about this one. Yeah! He shot his wife, didn't he? Right in front of a family member. What in the world really happened? And why is Lin so concerned about this prisoner? I don't know the answers, and I guess there's no need for me to know. I have only one objective, and that's to find out what the painter's work schedule is for tomorrow. New info has been added! I won't say new info has been added out loud every time because I'm probably not going to read through it. I know people probably do want me to read through it, but if I stop to read every single time there's new info added, each episode will probably be like an hour long. Photos, eh? I wonder if these are of his family. This one looks like a young woman holding a baby. Their faces have been blotted out with black paint. Did he do it out of hatred or some other emotion? Thankfully that's not something I need to know right now. So, the work schedule for, tom for tomorrow of Prisoner D99. The information Lin's looking for should be written on this blackboard. Unfortunately, I've lost the ability to read. But here I am anyway. The least I can do is take a look. Huh? What could this mean? There's nothing written on the board at all. I think something was written on the blackboards of the other prisoners. But this board is as clean and blank as the day it was hung here. So I have the answer Lin was looking for. Tomorrow's work schedule for D Prisoner D99 is... nothing. Would this information mean anything to her? It's not up to me to know or care. That's how I feel at this moment anyway. Not being able to read, I was wondering how this was going to turn out. Some things in this world can be read, even if one can't read. Prisoner D99's work schedule for tomorrow is blank. I better get this important information to Lin as fast as I can. Huh, so what do you guys think that means? He has nothing on his schedule for tomorrow. Interesting. D99, dinner! Quite a feast tonight, I see. Ah, uh, and I'm absolutely crazy about this chicken. It's too bad it's all cold and hard, though. I'd say it's been about two hours since it was cooked, judging from the way it feels. D99, 
I know it's kind of pointless to ask now, but just the same, I still want to know. Why did you do it? I agree. It's pointless to ask now. My case is colder than this chicken and has been forgotten by everyone. Myself included. Detective Jowd. Now then, let me eat in peace before it gets too cold to cut. There's one more thing I've been wondering for a long time. What's that? Who is the man in that painting? Oh, this? Well, being in prison like this, you start to forget faces, you know? So I paint the faces that I don't want to forget. And this is the last of those faces. Now, could you leave me alone for a bit? Let a man eat in peace. Okay, s sure. Sorry to bother you. What in the world? What in the world could this mean? Why is there a painting of me in this man's cell? Who exactly is this prisoner? The man whose case Lynn is investigating is painting a picture of me in his cell. I have to go see Lynn, fast, and not for her sake, for mine, to solve this mystery of me. Things are heating up. It seems this man seem it seems this man knows much more about us than we do, and that's kind of important now, isn't it? <laughs> this telephone doesn't connect to the outside, and I've got questions I want to ask Lynn. Gotta get to a place that has an external line, and fast. Well, thankfully, we can go ahead and use this and head to the guard room, you know, with off Officer Bailey and such, and that obviously has a line that leads out to uh, various different places. What voice do I give you? This headquarters! What's the status over there? Oh, Chief, it's you! They're making preparations now, no problem, sir! How much longer, then? One more hour, sir. Let's see. Carry on, then. Oh, and one more thing. Inspector Cabanella wishes to speak to you. Evening. Cabanella here. How you boys doing? Inspector Cabanella, fine, sir. You got another call, little call tonight, didn't you, from my baby? From Lynn? Uh, well, yes. Did my girl have anything... Interesting to say? Uh, not especially. She hung up almost immediately. I see. Next time she gives you a buzz, be sure to let me know right away. That's a good little fella. Yes, sir. You try to cover it up and I'm sure you'll regret it very much. Very much. Yes, sir. I'll call you right away, sir. Immediately. Don't forget, she's a fugitive after all. Yes, sir. Carry on, then. I might pop in a little later. Yes, sir. Looking forward to seeing you, sir. Trace complete. Now we have access to this new area right over here. We're just gonna... I'm gonna go ahead and read this first. Lynn should be heading for the chicken kitchen now, but the call from the police headquarters intrigues me, too. It's looking pretty obvious right now that white-suited inspector suspects Lynn, and she's being considered a fugitive. This is not good. I wonder if I should go check in on the chief and the inspector in white, too. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Inspector Cabanella seems to be looking for it too. Your Lynn, I mean. Inspector Cabanella, what would the Special Investigation Unit want with Lynn? I don't know, I guess something happened that we don't know about. Tonight of all nights. Inspector Cabanella must be upset tonight too. Weren't he and Prisoner D99, Detective Jowd, good friends? You sure about that? They were such good friends. How come Inspector Cabanella never came to visit him? He's the head of the special investigation. He's a very busy man. What's wrong? Gerald was my hero, you know. I wanted to be a detective because of him. But look at me, rotting away in a place like this. I can't even do anything to help Lynn. 
What am I doing with my life? This new side of you is kind of endearing. Anyway, the thing to do is work out fixing what you can, little by little. Like, for example, your house of cards. It collapsed, you know? Urgh. So that's a nice little character building moment. But, uh, yeah, I was basically gonna say what Sissel said there is that, you know, Lynn is over at the chicken kitchen right now, but we should probably go ahead and talk to the investigators in the first place. You know, of course, because Sissel is only going after himself right now and not really caring about anyone else. Preparations seem to be going smoothly over to the prison, eh, Inspector Cabanella? We were just a little too late. So close, eh, Inspector? We still have a little time left, Chief. Not much, but some. We've had Point X surrounded all night. If he shows up, we nab him, and we can still make it. By the way, what's going on with that old other case? The junkyard murder? She did it, eh? No question about it. She's a bad little baby. Disappearing from the scene like that, wonder where she ran off to play. What did he just say? She did it. Did I hear that right? I think they were talking about the culprit who killed me. No way. New info has been added. I just don't believe it. Why would you do a thing like that? Afraid I don't have the answers for you, Chief. I don't want you to believe it any more than you do. And yet. After seeing this, maybe we don't have any other choice but to believe, baby. Is that the security camera tape the investigator investigation unit just delivered? I can't deny. It's some pretty solid evidence against her. Evidence. Nothing like it, baby. Oof. Why a murder case now on such an important night? Tisk tisk. I think you have that wrong, Chief. A murder case now, for the very reason that it is such an important night. I somehow picked a voice for the Chief that I absolutely loved, loved doing somehow. Before I go find Lynn at the chicken kitchen, it sounds like there's an important piece of info here I shouldn't miss. Pretty solid evidence, he says. This I have to see. But it's funny. What do we have the bad feeling about? What do we have a bad feeling about what's on this tape? Uh, well, considering they said they have evidence against Lynn, that's most likely the reason why. Let's go ahead and see it for ourselves. The junkyard where I died had a security camera, and it captured the moment of my death perfectly. And what the tape showed me was the cruelest truth imaginable. I saw myself get shot, right before my own eyes, by Lynn. There goes my only lead. I feel like I've died all over again. One thing sticks with me, though. Lynn looked so surprised on that tape. What in the world did I tell her? Huh. 
The truth is the truth, no matter how many times you watch it, Inspector Cabanella. It wasn't me who played the tape just now, baby. Oh, by the way, Inspector Cabanella, there's something on that tape that troubles me. And what's that, Chief? I'm all ears. I had a look at all the photos of the crime scene as well, but, uh... The place where the victim was shot and where the body was found is clearly different. Hey, he's right. That is strange. The hitman in black is the one who kicked me downstairs, but I changed his fate so he should have been out of the picture. But there I am, down on the lower level. I have the answers for your mystery right here, a few minutes after the murder took place. Is that a black cat? You got it, baby. A furry feline messed up our crime scene. And then the little cat Cobra vanished into the night. Hmm. It looks like my destiny of being knocked downstairs is very hard to alter. Uh. <laughs> Whose voice is this? There's a point next. Come in, Chief. Red right, Chief here. Yeah. Did he show up? Uh, no, sir, not yet, but... Idiot, I told you to stay off the radio unless it was important. B but it is something important, sir. Somebody else showed up. Our rookie detective, Lynn. What? You won't see my baby over there, do you? I heard she was on the lam. What do you want me to do, chief? What do you say, Inspector? Detective! Get my baby away from point X. Do it now, man, and then hold on to her. Yes, sir. I'll go get her now, sir. What's the meaning of this? Why would Lynn show up at point X? It took the Special Investigation Unit six months to pinpoint that location. Don't know, Chief, but I'd say it wasn't a coincidence. Perhaps. What happened? Detective, come in. Now what? What happened this time? Damn it! This calls for a telephone call to Point X. Allow me. But yeah, the Chief's voice is quite fun to do. I know exactly how I do it. It's like I roll my tongue back and just sort of do like a an evil British accent or something like that. What are you doing? Get your buns over here. What did you say? Now I finally understand. I finally know what it's like for our poor hungry customers who have their food deliveries delayed. Excuse me, but there, this is the chicken kitchen, is it not? What? Aren't I talking to the police? The police? Did something happen there that you need assistance with? Something happened here, you ask? More like there's nothing left here. I got the call. Wait, wait. What's going on? Something, that's what. Something is definitely going on. And that something is far from nothing, that's for certain. Thanks for the tea, Chief. I'll be on my way. You're going to Point X. Point X, eh? I'll leave that to the boys. There's someplace else I gotta be. Inspector, you being there isn't going to change anything. Why put yourself through it? I have a responsibility, and I'm gonna see it through to the end. Besides, it's not quite over yet. 
Right, that's true. Do what you must then. Prisoner D99 schedule for tomorrow was blank. It seems like forever ago that I found that out. Now my mind is even blanker than that blackboard was. Lynn, my only lead and my partner, shot me. What did it all mean? I knew where I had to go to get my answers. The chicken kitchen. The point X. The police have surrounded. In the place where something big just happened. What will Lynn be involved in this time when I find her there?